We have Patrick Lebasseur, CEO of Bose Gold, Goldfields, with us today. Uh, Patrick, good to have you with us today. First off, I want to know why does Bose Goldfield uh, stand out and distinguishes you uh, from other players in the market? Well, it's a, a great question, but yeah, I mean, uh, I'd say as far as uh, gold exploration goes, we are a different animal compared to the others. You know, we're a leopard with different spots or a zebra with different stripes, as yeah. they say. Yeah. Uh, no, the reason is that our property is pretty unique and quite significant in Canadian mining history is that our property in the Bulls was the site of the first gold rush in Canada. Uh, and many first from there, you know, the first gold company in Canada came from the Bulls. Largest gold nuggets came from the Bulls. Um, and the new mining laws we know today, claiming system where the state owns that, all that came from legal troubles in the Bulls back in the 1800s. 1800s. 1800s, yeah. So, you know, there was intensive placer gold mining activity up until 1914. And then there was another big activity in the 1960s. So we have all that land package. But our main interest was finding out basically placer gold, just, just a quick recap what yeah. placer gold is, a little geology 101. Yeah, totally. Placer, when you, when you talk about a gold nugget, well, that's placer gold. In other words, it's gold that was, came, was ripped off from its hard rock source and transported by forces of nature to form a secondary deposit, which could be in rivers, at the buried at the bottom of valleys, ancient valleys, like that. So a lot of people maybe overlook those type of deposits because oh, they're not big, not gold. perhaps. But to me, what this says, this was one giant gold anomaly. It's a gold anomaly. Right. Where did the gold come from? And nobody has ever, you know, rolled up their sleeves and tried to figure that out, what happened in the bulls until we came along. Because the folks was always on exploitation versus exploration, you know, and it's logical. You know, if you exploit, you make money, that's yeah. it. Yeah. So it takes, it took an effort to go over that leap. Yeah. Says, okay, let's just overlook right now that that short-term potential, and let's see if we can find the source. Because the source might just be the tip of the iceberg. Who knows? Perhaps we have, you know, a, a world-class gold deposit underneath our feet. We don't know. We got to find that out. Right. And here's the good news. After what? After years, we've been public now five years. It's our fifth year anniversary. After five years, we finally pieced. You know, we've, we, we, we did a lot of geology work, which hasn't been done before. Because before, a lot was known about the place of deposit, but the geology that surrounds it is virtually unknown. Right. None, none, it's hard to believe, but no work was done. So you're so, going a step further than what was done before. You want to push the boundaries of what's happening there in both. We right? did. Yeah, yeah, we did. We made a great discovery. Yeah, tell us about oh. this discovery. It's, well, uh, for the first time in 107 years, it was finally some hard rock drilling, which hit a structure, which hit a gold bearing structure. And not only that, which th that in itself is significant. That was the first, first time, believe it or not, with just only 500 meters wow. and going only 30 meters deep. But the other significance is that we were able to, when we analyzed the gold that we got in our, in our gold carrots, we, had, we, we got up to 11 grams, 11 grams. When we analyzed the other elements, we, in our drill course, had the same suite of elements, what we call pathfinder elements. And those elements match exactly the, um, the till that sits the placer gold deposit down the valley. So we have a match. So the structure that we found is most likely one of the sources of the placer gold deposit. So now we're on a trail, we're on a hot trail. Right. And let's bring it uh, into some, a different direction now. I know you talked a lot about gold, uh, but you did claim a, a phosphate property. We did. Uh, tell us about uh, this. How did it come about and why phosphate? Why did you choose to, well, to do that? that that fossil, well, that's, that's a bit of like, um, I can't help it. I'm a businessman and I saw an opportunity, you know. Um, well, I mean, I knew about phosphate. I knew that phosphate was, uh, uh, it's for, it's for phosphate is mainly used for fertilizer. Yeah. That I knew. And I know there's, this, there's a lot of talk about, you know, reaching peak phosphate. In other words, um, if we don't find new phosphate deposits, in the next 10 years, in about 10 years time, world reserves will start, will be in the declining phase. Right. So it will be slowly depletion totally. if there's no big deposits found. Now, to me, that's concerning because no phosphate, you don't, there's no food. <laughs> you, can, you can't grow food industrial scale. Right. That I knew, but what really piqued my interest and what's really caught me by surprise is that last year, the battery, which is being most, the most widely adopted battery by electric vehicle companies, BYD, that's all they use. Tesla just started, and, and it's a rapidly growing battery. It's the lithium iron phosphate battery. Right. Now, 
to me, I saw this, wait a minute. We're talking about missing phosphate to, for food to feed the people. And now there's this whole car industry that just came out of nowhere yeah. that wants this phosphate. So that's one. I said, gee, that's an opportunity. And second, apparently, Quebec has some of the purest phosphate rock. The difference is, is that in Quebec, most phosphate deposits around the world are sedimentary rock. Right. Quebec is very unique that its phosphate is in basically is in, is in volcanic rock. Mm. Different types of volcanic, the host rock is volcanic. And what that means is that when you want to make phosphoric acid, um, there's less impurities and it's ideal for uh, phosphoric acid for batteries. Right. So that's why I just couldn't pass up this opportunity. Of course, uh, I claimed for the benefit of shareholders, I claimed all this into both gold fields. So it's a portfolio held within both gold fields under the banner Quebec Phosphate. And, uh, you know, we'll see. We got to move forward from there and we'll see. Uh, I got to find a way to monetize this uh, for the benefit of all shareholders. Totally. Correct me if I'm wrong, but phosphate is also used for energy storage, right? Like uh, to well, fuel a cities. So, and that's a, that's a huge market as well. It, it, perhaps, yeah. I know less about that. All I know is that, geez, it's being used right now. It's not experimental. It's being used right now yeah. and for, for, you know, for car batteries. Right. And it's the dominant battery, which is spreading really quickly right. now so going back to the actual gold property uh if we go back a little bit i know historically there was some huge gold nuggets right like some of the biggest like yes. gold nuggets gold uh, nugget, biggest gold nuggets in canada yeah in canada yeah. that was at the prop it's the same property you're at right it's now. the same property you're at yeah the famous mcdonald nuggets the famous saint Ange nuggets and uh, many like those yeah that's incredible that's yeah. there's a, definitely a lot of rich history in both one of the questions i had as well is what's your your outlook on gold like in the year that's to come and also uh, the last year, if uh, you well, have some comments to do on that. Yeah, well, something happened just over the weekend. And what's nice about it, it happened, but nobody's talking about it. It sort of just happened stealthily, quietly. And those are always the start of bull markets. Yeah. What happened is that gold hit a new high. Yeah. What's your comments on that, uh, on gold prices, and what's your outlook for 2024? Yeah, of course. Well, this is a, my personal opinion. But um, what I found really interesting over the weekend is that, you know, quietly, stealthily, Gold made a new high, but this new high is really important because for the past five years, gold, you know, went up to 2070 about and always kept hitting that ceiling and wasn't able to break it. And it just did it with no fanfare. Yeah. And that is that is very typical of a very strong bullish indicator. When something important like this happens and nobody notices, watch out. You know, this looks it looks pretty good for gold. All I'm telling you, it looks pretty good for gold long term. You know, yeah, there'll probably be profit taking bumps in there, but uh, long term trend, I think this might set a new long term trend, which, you know, hopefully will trickle down to the majors and then the juniors, just like us, like it usually does. Yeah. yeah. You know, history, uh, we've had historical rise in interest rates in the United States, Canada too, you know, I mean, unprecedented in, in, in history, in, 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 you know. And um, so two years ago when that started, there was a key event that happened. Now I'm getting a bit uh, no, technical, yeah. but still, yeah. but you know, people listen, it's, it's pertinent to people that are invested in this field, especially, you know, TSX Venture Exchange, because the yield, there was an inversion of the yield curve. The past 35 years, and maybe perhaps even further, I just couldn't get data further into the, to the Vancouver Stock Exchange, but every time there's an inversion of the yield curve, two years forward starts a TSX Venture bull market. Right. Saturday was the two-year anniversary of that. So it's just funny how that coincides with gold suddenly making a breakout, you know? Um, it could signal economic woes generally, but usually economic woes tends to be good for gold, tends to be good for, you know, commodity and resource stocks. And, you know, perhaps, uh, perhaps we're at the start of, uh, you know, of a nice uh, bull market run, yeah, which, would be, which would be nice because, I mean, the mining sector has been the, the most unloved sector in North America yeah. right now. And it's usually like that. It's because it's inversely correlated to high, to high tech stocks, yeah. you know? Um, but when that when that tide changes, there's an inversion, that correlation goes the opposite way. Right, in terms of this, this, what you just uh, spoke about right now, um, yes, there's gold prices, but what else needs to happen in the market uh, for generalists, general retail investors to have more eyes on the mining industry? Because obviously yeah. there's tech companies, like you said, there's cryptocurrency uh, that's emerging. Uh, what needs to happen? Well, it needs to happen. Uh, you know, it, it usually goes in phases, like 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 any like any bull market. You know, you could change the label on it, but bull markets react pretty much the same way either way you go. 
So, you know, at first, at first it grabs attention of people that are in that sector that work in it, and then the institutional side, and then the, um, you could say the, the more, uh, uh, more astute investors get into it, and then of course the general public. So it's a, it's a question of suddenly, you know, suddenly capital that shifts from one point to the other. You know, it's totally. like that, you know, I mean, it's, uh, you know, when, when the tech, when the tech will have reached a, its peak and then there will start, people will start taking profits. And then if there's too many people taking profits and then that starts a downward trend, a downward trend just feeds itself. And then, oh, and then suddenly people look, what's the other sector? Hey, this looks pretty good. Yeah. Hundred <laughs> percent. So yeah, we'll That's have to keep public we'll have, psychology. But, right. Yeah, we'll have to keep a, uh, an eye uh, on this sector in general, and on and of uh, course both gold, gold, fields. gold fields. BGF, um, look, we're trading at historic lows. I mean, we've been following this uh, so far. The trend. I mean, TSX Venture is at historic lows. So are we. But um, things can change. Yeah. Is there anything yeah. else you'd like to add uh, to the audience before we close this interview off, uh, Patrick? Yeah. Well, you know, I look forward to uh, 2024. And, uh, and Ford, I mean, like I said, we made this very exciting discovery. You know, I mean, that's, and that was a raison d'etre, really, to go public, was to find the source of Canada's first place of gold rush. Right. And, uh, you know, we, we, we feel we're hot and close. I mean, after five years of work, we finally made a breakthrough. And we got to follow up on that. 100%. Yeah. We're glad to have you, Patrick. Thanks so much. Thanks a lot. Thanks.